we're back with another video. That was the intro. I don't know. <laughs> we're back and it's an international break. I love these. These are so much fun. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk a little bit about four, three or four games in particular, maybe four, but very briefly, like a very, very brief snippet because some exciting things are going on internationally. The first game uh, you know, we were pumped about, the United States versus Nigeria, which obviously it's an exciting game. Is it is Nigeria one of the top teams in the world? Again, not really. They're a great team, but uh, it's still exciting to watch this game. It's a friendly. It's exciting. We saw you on Amaru. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and we're not going to talk. I think we'll wait until after the second friendly on the sixth to talk about uh, this the the two games and what everyone thinks or thought. But four nil. I mean, pretty good game. First half much better than the second half. Sophia Smith scored two, Lindsay Horan scored one, and Alex Morgan scored a penalty kick. But I thought it was a good game. Second half was kind of clunky, but... And it's like going into that game, I, I kind of wanted America just to kinda blow Nigeria out of the water. But, you know, it really wasn't like that. Yeah, no. But Nigeria's a, a tough team. The other big game that Sarah and I are excited to watch, and I did not watch this game. Someone posted it on YouTube, and I watched some of it, and I definitely watched the highlights. But... It was a qualifier, the World Cup qualifiers, which are very important. It was Austria versus the Lionesses. And we talked about this a little bit on our episode last time. I thought Austria had a kind of a good shot, possibly of winning or maybe even tying. Um, but Lionesses, 2-0, they won. Um, Alicia Russo, the queen herself, and Nikita Paris uh, both scored. And, you know, it was up until the 69th minute. It was still 1-0. Uh, England so if they could uh, Austria could have could have come back they could have come back they could have tied Austria from what everything I, I kind of have read their attack wasn't there they were not matching England's team but England wasn't playing amazingly either I you know read you know that some people thought some of the passes between Lucy and Leo were a little sloppy things like that so yeah. but all they needed was one point to get into the World Cup they have done that they have officially qualified for the World Cup. And that's that's all you need. It's what you want to do. You want to get in there. Right. You know, that was exciting. Um, England plays uh, Luxembourg on the 6th. And I believe Austria plays North Macedonia on the 6th as well. So those should both be exciting games. This next team game I want to talk about. This is kind of, I don't want to say this is our focus of the video. But I did want to get a little bit into this for two reasons. There's, you know, like I, Sarah and I always say, there's some storylines that go behind this game. Ooh. It was... Netherlands versus Scotland. And I think when this game first was announced, you know, a lot of people, especially who watch our channel, you know, you know, got excited about the Lisa Viv matchup. You know, was there going to be a Lisa Viv uh, meetup to play against this game? Obviously, we know that Lisa and Viv are on fine terms. They are friends. They're all good. They're all good on social media. They're fine. They are, you know, they're cool. They're chill. Um, we've seen, and I, I think it's important, you know, we kind of talked about this last time. They've kind of made it, they wanted to make their fans know, hey, we're good, we're chill. Yeah, it was nice to see that. I mean, it was very refreshing to see them, you know, together and not hitting each other with the bouquet. Okay. <laughs> like um, bridesmaids. Bridesmaids, yeah. <laughs> so we, so we know they're cool. But Viv played, unfortunately, Lisa did not play. She is injured. So mm -hmm. we did not see that matchup on the field. Because also, if you remember, the Netherlands played the English team before the Euros. And if you remember, that was when it showed that Beth and Dan were completely cool. After the match, they, they you know, they hugged. They were completely cool. Um, so, I mean, those kind of moments, I think as fans, we always look for to, you know, the interactions. But, you know, we already know that Viv and Lisa are 100% cool. So we did not see that. You know, to be honest, I did not watch this match. Someone did post it on um, YouTube. So I might go back and watch it. I did watch the highlights. Good match. And I guess the second storyline of this Netherlands uh, game is that, as we remember, Mark Parsons was the coach for the Euros. You know, there was that whole thing with Jill Roard and there was a whole thing with the some of the top players had opinions, even though some liked him, some didn't, some, you know, but we remember that Jill Roard kind of thing, how he said he's from a different culture. I think it was just all what she was saying wasn't meant to be taken seriously, but still people said, even if it wasn't meant to be taken, quote unquote, seriously, you still shouldn't have said it. 
you know, but we yeah. remember that. But we remember the Euro result for the Netherlands was not, they were out in the quarters, which that's not what they came to do. They were disappointed. And um, as we know, Mark Parsons actually had left. So uh, he resigned. Actually, I don't know if he was resigned or fired, actually. It doesn't matter. He's gone. <laughs> um, so they have He's a new coach now. Andreas Jonker. Um, yeah, they have a new coach. And I'm still saying a year out to the World Cup. Um, and I was, you know, some people think it's not that far out. And some people say, hey, it's a whole year. A lot of things can happen in a year. Last year, Serena Wegman was the coach of the Netherlands for the Olympics. It was uh, a different coach for Team GB. And so that was a whole year ago. And then Team England, Team GB, basically the same team. They came back and won the Euros after uh, not having a great result at the Olympics. So it's wild. a year is a lot, but not incredibly a lot. You know what I mean? Um, so they have a new coach. Um, and one of the things that happened at uh, the Euros was that uh, we, as everyone remembers, Viv famously got COVID. Ugh. I would, I know. I would say Sorry. she was the, one of the most high profile people to get COVID at the Euros. And that was a major, major blow to the Netherlands for a lot of reasons. Um, but she was not able to play in a few matches, but she was able to play in the match against France for the quarterfinals. She, from every, from all the reports, she did have mild symptoms, mild to, you know, cause some people who get COVID or asymptomatic, don't really have symptoms it seemed like she got it and it was uh a bit impactful for her so so she quarantined she came back and she came back for that match and as we remember she played the whole 120 minutes because it went to extra time which i think was shocking because it's like okay if you get covid you know you think you'd you think you wouldn't play a whole match right you would think that you would i don't want to say take it easy but that 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 can affect your long term health forever. You overdoing it after having a having a virus that is almost kind of an unknown long term, and to go out there and push your body to the absolute max. So a lot of people are like, "Wow, she played," and we don't know the inner workings of. She told Mark Parsons, "I'm playing. I don't care." Or if Mark Parsons says, "You're playing." You know, we don't know that conversation. But somebody somebody tweeted this right, right around the time the euros happened and this kind of goes into what happened at the game the other day um somebody posted this and they were talking about her playing that whole game they say no matter how much the player wants it or how important the player is to your team surely it's not healthy to keep someone on for 90 minutes after having just recovered from covid let alone 120 health should always come first yeah and i mean i agree My with that exactly yeah, yeah, yeah i don't know who wouldn't agree with that because <laughs> you know we don't know the inner workings maybe viv said i'm playing maybe mark says G i'm only gonna let you go you know your body better than anyone you know sometimes coaches give yeah. that okay so that that person let the comment but this is the interesting part if you look at who liked this comment social media queen uh beth mead <laughs> yeah. of course beth mead liked this comment and this was on twitter so it's like if beth is liking that beth and viv obviously beth knows viv's inner workings about herself her body and everything so if beth is liking that there must she must see something in this comment that says yes i agree with this comment viv should have never played 120 minutes did the coach not make a wise decision either letting viv play or pushing viv to play yeah because i mean like this person says obviously health should always be number one priority because you know you can't right. play if you're dead. So she played. So she. So that's a little bit from a couple of my games. We. This was. A, this was um, over a month ago at this point. This happened. Um. But we never talked about it. And um, but something interesting happened at the match against Scotland. If we go to the match against Scotland, good match. I didn't really watch it necessarily. I might watch it. Someone posted it on YouTube. But um, it was two one. Viv scored in the tenth, uh, and then Scotland scored in the twelfth minute. So it was a great game, you know, between the tenth and the twelfth minute. So until the eighty ninth minute, it was a one one game, and in the eighty ninth minute, Oof. Netherlands scores. Um, so that's, that's an hot. exciting game. But the part that I want to talk about it going back to, going back to Viv's health. So she's playing in the game. You know, the camera pans to her. And we see her really I, coughing, struggling, coughing. I don't know what the word would be because is it struggling? No, but they were pretty deep coughs. Talking up a loogie or yeah, ch that looked chesty. I don't, I don't know. Coughing up a lung, maybe. Yes, and she was really coughing. And somebody actually posted this on Twitter. Somebody had noticed this, and we. And the very first thing I thought about was, you know, the effects of COVID on 
Viv playing the 120 minutes. Could this be part of it? Could this be who, you know, could this be part of it? Did, could Mark Parsons have put Viv's um, health, health in, in danger? Yeah. Because those were pretty intense coughs. It didn't look good. So, you know, we saw that. And then I saw the thread from when the person on Twitter posted, posted it. And someone made a good point, said, hey, you know, they didn't think it was long COVID because she, Viv had had this cough before. Mm. So it could have been very well that she had it. This is just an ongoing, maybe a thing that Viv has had. But to have that happen with Mark Parsons playing her 120 minutes cr- directly after having COVID, this is actually a voiceover. I'm editing the video now. But to think that if Viv already has a pre-existing health situation, that Mark Parsons still played her for the 120 minutes and without taking that into account, I think that was possibly one of the problems, even if it has nothing to do with COVID at all. But the fact that Mark Parsons still played her for the 120 minutes um, with this other issue going on. So that was part of the issue that was seemingly concerning. We know what happens when you have COVID, what it does to your lungs, what it does to your respiratory, what it does to your heart, what it does to a lot of things, uh, it, what it can do. Yeah, this doesn't paint the greatest of pictures. <laughs> exactly. Um, but you like that other comment said, she's always had it, so we don't want to make something it's not. But I just think it was, I think it's scary. If anything, it's scary. Yeah. I hope that Viv is completely okay, um, that she, you know, it's just something she's always had that, you know, flares up every now and then. And, but I do think it was interesting. Beth liked that comment saying she would, she should have never played 120 minutes. And Beth liked that comment. Yeah, that's also very telling. So was there anything connected? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but Mark Parsons is out there. I'm glad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, they have a year to gear up for the World Cup. And like some, I was, someone's telling me, you know, as much as it's not that long of a time, it's enough time to do what you need to do. Yeah. Um, so what did everyone think about that match? I mean, sad we didn't see Lisa out there. Hopefully she, she's recovering. Uh, but good match. Hope Viv's okay. You know, just so much going on. Okay. The very last match we're going to talk about. It's not we're not really going to talk about it. But if anyone watched the Australia-Canada game, what a match. It 